Now that we've established our texture slope, we can take a look at our altitude-based textures here inside of Texture Height. Now earlier on you saw that we added in five textures ranging from beach sand up to some grass, to some more sparse grass, then rock, and then snow. And so now what we're going to do is control the altitude at which each one of these textures will be visible. Now earlier on I pushed all of my textures up to the high end of the spectrum so that we could just focus on slope and get this beach sand up here. Now I'm going to spread those back out starting off numerically. So let's start with 0.3 and then I'll do 0.35 and then 0 0.4, 0 0.45, you get the idea. 0 0.5, 0 0.6, we can spread it out a little more now, 0.7 and then 0.8. Now what you see here are 0 to 1 values that are associated with a gradient. And we can control the flags on the gradient just like we control the numbers, but what do these really correspond to? Because obviously they're not real altitudes. They correspond to the maximum height of your terrain starting from the bottom. So if we go under the terrain resolution for this particular piece of terrain, you'll see our terrain height is set to 100. So you can consider this particular gradient starting at 0 and running up to 100. Now we can control exactly where these textures go based on just the numbers if you want, but I mean, we're lucky in this case because 0 to 100 is a pretty easy factor to work with, but I like working with the flags anyway. So we can start with texture number 1, and notice as I drag the flag over for texture 2, we are also controlling the blending from 1 to 2, and that's an important thing to keep in mind. So I'm just going to space these out fairly evenly and click apply procedural texture and check out what we get. We start off at the very bottom with our beach sand and then we blend up to grass, then we blend up to our sparse grass on rocks, then just the rocks and then we have some snow on top. Now if we want that blending to be a little bit less prevalent, if we actually want some tighter banding, all we need to do is push these start and end flags a little closer together so we can push one and two closer together two and three closer together, three and four closer together, and then four and five, which I'll leave five a little spaced out so the snow kind of drifts off. Then we click apply, and now you can see much tighter banding. So again, just a really, I just wanted to show a quick example to show how these uh, elevation-based textures are being calculated. Of course, there's a lot of fine tuning you can add to this, but the other thing I really want to drive home is that in the end, this is just the starting point. Yes, we've added all of these textures in via the Terrain Toolkit, and yes, we've established where they should and shouldn't be based on altitude, but we don't have to stop there. At this point, we're essentially done with what the Terrain Toolkit's going to do for us, so we can close it. We can jump back up to our Terrain Tool settings, and as soon as we jump into Texture, check it out. All of the textures that we've added are now here waiting for us. So if we think, you know, well, that looked pretty good, but... You know, the beach sand could go up a little higher here in these areas. All we have to do is select our sand, adjust our brush settings accordingly, and we can start painting. So in the end, I just want to remind you that you're using what the Terrain Toolkit comes up with as a starting point. It's a way to help you get a lot of the initial work done much more quickly, but it's not the be-all, end-all, so to speak. And you're really going to benefit a lot from taking the time to tweak what it gives you and perfect it for exactly what it is you're looking for. That's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks for watching.